If you follow me on Twitter, you've probably seen me post a lot of market expectations lately and most of them have played out. So in this video, I will cover a few of them and walk you over how I analyzed the market and predicted the moves before they happened. Here's Bitcoin and there's the Nasdaq. And I will focus on the Nasdaq for this video where I walk you over this call out and also I took a trade here and also why I called out this level almost to the minute today. All right, let's start on the higher time frames and let's go back to last week, Monday. Let me quickly clear this chart and remove any indicator for now. As you can see, when we go to the monthly, the monthly has opened up, traded lower aggressively, clearing out these lows and trading back into this range. If we go to the daily, you can see price deviated below this range, tested it one more time and now closed above these highs again, which to me makes me think, okay, we might be in a bullish trend right now. If we go on the four hourly time frame, you can see we took out these two highs very recently. So after taking out a major liquidity pool, I'm always waiting for some sort of choppiness, some sort of consolidation in the market. So if I skip forward to when Wednesday happened, you can see price was very indecisive and just traded up and down in a tight trading range. Let's mark that out. Let's make it green. All right, dropping on the lower time frame, in this case, in the hourly, we can see that a Monday or last week's Friday in this case made these nice equal lows. And you can see Monday traded relatively close, but didn't take these out. So these are nice equal lows, which makes this a good liquidity pool. So now I'm waiting for price to trade below these lows, once again, because I'm bullish, for then to continue trading higher. This is also what I shared in an analysis I did in a live stream. This is also the expectation I shared in Monday's live stream of this week. Let's skip forward and there you go. As you can see, price traded aggressively lower as soon as New York session started, seven trading lower, clearing these lows into this support level. Ideally, I always want to see following pattern. Price taking out a low, then we get an expansion, then we have consolidation, purge, and then continuation, like this. Manipulation, expansion, consolidation, manipulation, distribution. And this is exactly what we got here. Manipulation, expansion, consolidation, and now we are in that continuation purge, which is another manipulation below that consolidation low. Dropping on a lower time frame again. As you can see, I posted that tweet this time, which was very close to the low of that day, low of that week. And after that, I'm waiting for some level of confirmation. In this case, this was a very aggressive down closed candle with almost no wicks on both ends, closing below a liquidity pool. This makes it a high probability order block for me once we close back above this. So we closed below that liquidity pool. We swept this swing low once more. So as soon as price closes above this, this for me is a confirmed order block. And I'm now waiting for price to reach for this nice consolidation and then for that higher time frame consolidation range highs. Price did another continuation purge. This is the same pattern I just described on the higher time frame. We had our expansion here. Then we have a consolidation. We have a continuation purge there. And then we have the distribution into these highs. We even got the same pattern once more. Consolidation, manipulation, expansion, consolidation, manipulation, expansion. This would have been the analysis completely based of price action, but of course I also used my statistical mapping tools. And as you can see, I called out this level once we traded into that daily distribution level, which for explanation purposes, on bearish days, this is where the low of that day forms on average. So very rarely we trade far below it. This is typically a good reversal point. Not only did we have that important level for the daily time frame, but we can also enable the weekly time frame. And as you can see, we were below that weekly manipulation level. 
What does that mean? That means on a bullish week, and this is statistically speaking, where price forms the low of the week on average. So as you can see, based on the weekly and of the daily, based on historical price data, this was statistically a good reversal level. Now, let's actually look at the next day as well. Let's once again enable the OHRC stat map. We have a bullish bias and our bullish bias has been confirmed and we expect the low of the week to be in. So in this case, we're now looking for price to continue trade higher. As you can see, this is a new daily candle, in this case midnight. We can also look at it without midnight. Let's see what that was. Yep, this is also something I typically use. If Asia expands in our anticipated direction, I then use New York midnight open. So in this case, Asia did expand and it's in the direction of my bias, which is bullish. So now price trade into that manipulation level. Let's see what happens next. Price clears out this low once more. Let's zoom a little in. This is our current CSD. This would be our high probability order block because once again, a large body, pretty much no weeks on either side into key level being liquidity pool and the statistical daily low. Now price close above this. Let's buy here. And our next target would be previous day's high. And there we go. We are following the same logic as the day before. Bullish daily bias, price manipulating into statistical low of the day. Then we close above this order block and then continue trading higher into the next logical objective. Price did end up trading higher into the daily distribution level, which would be the statistical high of that day for bullish days. But we already had a 2.8 R trade and I'm fine with taking low hanging fruit targets. Now let's go on the hourly again and see how the West develops. But we have already cleared a lot of points for this week. And as you can see, price also reached for that weekly distribution level, which means statistically speaking, this is where bullish weeks form the high of the week. So we're typically not expecting much of an expansion above this level. So this is a good reason to stay out of the market for now. So let's see what happens. Okay, as expected, price ended up not trading much higher and a new week started. That means we can create a new analysis. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, the consolidation, manipulation, expansion. Now, what phase are we currently in again? This very much looks like a consolidation to me because there's no clear trading higher or lower. We're currently just trading in last week's range still from Thursday to Friday. It's also worth mentioning that this week, which is the current week, I'm recording that video right now, it's FOMC, which means significant economic news will be dropped on Wednesday at 2 p.m. and 2.30. So we see 2.30 coming up. The previous recording cut off at this point, so I'll just redo it from here on. So the same thing as the day before. You can see we had that huge up candle, which means Asia had some expansion. So in this case, we're once again using midnight projections. And what's also always interesting for me is that we have had a consolidation around the opening price. Two equal highs at the opening price. That's always a good draw on liquidity for me personally. So once again, we now have FOMC coming up in the 50 minute candle after this. And let's see, price heavily trades into this liquidity pool, lining up with that daily distribution level. What does daily distribution level mean? We typically don't form prices lower than this for the day. Let's go on the five minute time frame. And another quick quiz question. What is this candle? Why is this candle a high probability order block for me? Very simple. It has pretty much no wicks on either sides. So it's a very bulky candle, which closed below a liquidity pool. In this case, it was also a fair value gap, which makes this even a better reversal sign once we close above this level. As you can see, we took out this swing low once more. And now I want to see price trading above this candle. We do that right here. 
So let's buy our first position. Our stop loss would be below this level. I typically don't risk more than 1% per trade. So this for demonstration purposes, I just use one contract in this back testing tool, but typically I don't risk more than 1% per trade. As you can see, price traded down once again into this old liquidity pool. And now I want to see price displays higher again. Perfect. I took another position in there. Let's just do it here. This is a bit late, but I took it within this candle. And now what's the next target? The next target will be these consolidation highs. And after that, this range high. Skip forward. As you can see, price trades far back into this counter again. But our stop loss should be safe if we're bullish. There we go. Let's take off our first position above this high. Our stop should not be touched again if we put it down there. And as you can see, price starts a new consolidation because the day was over after this. And there we go. Price now displaces higher again in Asia. What does that mean? If Asia expands, that means I will use New York midnight projections. And this is why at the start of the day, I posted in the Discord that this is my logical reversal point for the day. I also made the bullish manipulation distribution level thicker just because we care more about these if we are bullish. So now you can see better the manipulation level is close to that liquidity pool. So that's a reasonable level for price to reverse. Again, our current target is this range high with the rest of this position. Price started, starts by trading higher, even trading into that bearish manipulation level. So if I zoom in, you can see price left these two equal highs. So this could be a nice target for us later. New York open starts within the next candle, 9.30, and you can see price displaces it down heavily into the manipulation level. We did not take out the low yet. We did now. As you can see, this would be our change in the safe delivery for price to trade higher, but we cannot close above this level. Now at this point in time, I can even go on the one minute time frame. You can see I posted this tweet. If we're still bullish on NASDAQ, I think here is a good level to reverse. Because once again, below the daily manipulation level, at a liquidity pool, and something I also added to the chart is that four hourly manipulation level. <laughs> what does that mean again? The current four hour candle, if we are bullish, statistically forms its low at this price level. And as you can see, price just tapped into it. And as soon as it did, I posted that tweet. Let's turn off the daily level just so the chart is clearer. So now we only have that four hourly level. And as you can see, we have a target here and the range high just above, which was our original target. So now, once again, what are we waiting for? We are waiting for price to show willingness to go higher. As you can see, these are the last down close candles that took out this liquidity pool into the manipulation level. So at this point, price closes above this. So here's where I took another position. My stop is now below this level because I don't want to see price trade back into this once more because I expect the low of the day to be in because once again we were below the daily the midnight manipulation level and the four hourly manipulation level and as you can see price continue trading higher into the range high which was my higher time frame target here's the screenshot once again and yep this wraps up the week for me so far the link to the setmap indicators will be in the description as well as the link to the free discord. So feel free to join. And if you've got any questions, just comment below. And thank you for watching. See you next time.